Hey everyone, it's Sunday and it's time for story time. I have an axolotl with me today. Now, I've done axolotls before, but they're such a cool animal, so why not? This one happens to be a leucistic. So when we normally look at axolotls, we notice that they're kind of like a slatish gray color, sometimes a little bit of brown. Uh, but this one's actually missing all of its color pigment. Now it's not albino. Um, albinism is when you have none of the black pigments at all. So sometimes when we look at albino animals, they have red eyes. So they're actually missing the pigment out of their eyes as well. Leucistic animals though actually retain the black in their eyes, as you can kind of see the little black dots on top of her head there. Uh, but then they don't have any of the pigment through the rest of their body. Now this doesn't really harm them at all. Um, normally animals that have leucism, leucisticism, however we want to say it, really tongue-tied today, um, or albinism need to stay out of the sun. They're more likely to be burned because melanin in your skin actually helps protect you from UV rays. Uh, but being that axolotls don't like being very warm and they don't want to be out in the sun because they're an amphibian, they, we don't worry about it as much. They like to hide underneath like leaf litter and branches and rocks and stuff when they're out in the wild. Now, speaking of the wild, they don't really exist in the wild anymore. Um, over the course of the last 20 years, it seems every time they do some wild surveys, they find less and less axolotls to the point that the last couple of surveys, they haven't really found any. Um, this is due to a lot of things. There's invasive fish like uh, tilapia and perch, Asian carp, uh, climate change, so it's making things warmer. And as I mentioned, these guys like it cold. Um, typically they like temperatures around like 60 degrees, really no warmer than about 68. So with climate change, it's really making it hard for them to live in the water systems that they have. Uh, but also pollution is a really big thing. Historically, they only lived in two different uh, types of lakes that were in Mexico City in the surrounding area. But one of those uh, lakes is completely non-existent anymore. Like it just doesn't exist. It's completely drained. And the other one is mainly just a system of canals now. There's no open lake. And then even then what's left is very, very polluted. So. Um, Researchers and professors and everybody at various universities in Mexico are trying to fix that. Uh, the Mexico uh, government stepped up and is trying to make people more aware of axolotls and how important they are. It, they even recently got put on a peso. And then there's lots of uh, US researchers who are also doing the same thing. Now, something very unique about axolotls though is they have uh, pedomorphism, sometimes called neoteny. Uh, that means they keep this juvenile stage here and never grow into what we would consider a full adult, even though they become sexually mature. So most salamanders are gonna look like this at some point. They lay an egg with a little black dot in it that looks a lot like a frog or a toad egg. It starts to develop, becomes a tadpole, breaks out of the egg and swims around and it starts to develop its legs and everything. Eventually after the legs are developed, the tail gets sucked in, the gills get sucked in. Um, you know, and then you have a frog or a toad, and then with salamanders, they lose their gills but retain their tail. But axolotls never go through that, so it makes them a very, very special creature. Uh, and also because of that, because they're always stuck in that juvenile stage, they can actually regrow limbs. So uh, they're used for research for a lot because of that, because it can kind of teach us different things about um, how cells work, how regeneration works, and things like that. Um, and what's really cool is if for whatever reason this axolotl got sick or say a cage mate nipped a, um, one of the frills off or nipped a toe off or something, we actually just put it in cold or water and the metabolism stops focusing on body uh, energy such as like digestion uh, for energy and focuses more on regeneration. So they're a really, really cool animal. Um, I used the axolotl again this week, not only because they're a cool animal, but because I found a really awesome book. This is called Axolotl Finds a Bottle, and it's by Leslie Sims and David Semple. So I picked this up today at the Capital City Comic Con, along with a few other really cool animal related books. So I'm gonna go ahead and read Axolotl Finds a Bottle to our axolotl friend here. So here we go. I'm an axolotl and it's not a lot of fun. Axolotl feels fed up. I wish I wasn't one. Just then, she spots an, an old gold bottle lying in the sand. She pulls the stopper with a pop. It comes out of her hand. Swirls of twirling, wispy mist curl around the lake. Oh no, she cries. What have I done? Was that a big mistake? She 
She blinks her eyes. To her surprise, a genie has appeared. He winks and smiles all the while he strokes his pointy beard. You summon me, how can I help? The trouble is, you see, my life is dull. It's lonely. Oh, I don't like being me. The genie makes a shower of stars. He shakes and shouts out, bingo. Axolotl changes shape. Now she's a flamingo. Thank you, genie, she begins, but then she starts to frown. I don't like standing on one leg. I just keep falling down. More magic, cries the genie with a twinkle. This is fab. I don't like walking sideways, so I cannot be a crab. The genie sighs and tries again. Please work this time, he begs. The problem with the porpoise is it hasn't any legs. The genie thinks things do look bleak. At last he gives a shriek. You simply need a friend and then some games of hide and seek. Yeah. Oh, and that is it. I thought the last pages were stuck together. But this is a book based on phonics. Uh, so this is helping people to read. Um, I really like it because I call them basically tongue twisters, but I like things that rhyme a lot. Not quite a poem, but just a book that keeps going. Um, the cool message about this book is you don't necessarily want to change who you are. Sometimes you just need to have the right friends around. So Axe Lattle kept trying to change herself because she was lonely and didn't like the way things were. But once she realized she's okay with herself, she realized she just needs some more friends that work just like her. So I hope you enjoyed Axolotl Finds a Bottle, and I hope you enjoyed learning about our Axolotl friend here, and we will see you next time.